Have you ever picked up a book only to be blindsided with content that you weren't prepared for? Perhaps this content unexpectedly triggered a traumatic memory, some anxiety, or just made you feel uncomfortable? Well, what if I told you that there was a way to avoid these unpleasant surprises with something that authors and publishers are already using? This potential solution is called content warnings, and they're starting to be printed into the first few pages of books. No matter if you like content warnings or not, we're going to explore all sides of the argument and look at some alternatives too. So stick to the end because once you've watched this video, I want your opinions in the comments. So before we get into the ins and outs of content warnings and your opinions, because yes, I've already asked you and yes, you have some opinions, let's look at what a content warning is in the first place. This is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson, which is a brilliant book by the way, go read it. I received this book in a fairy loot box and when I finally got round to reading it, I noticed something unusual in the first few pages. A content warning. This warning is written as the author's note and contains some flagged issues for readers to be aware of. This kind of content warning is still pretty rare in fiction books and clearly comes from the author rather than the publisher. Another example of this is Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. Again, the content warning comes in the form of an author's note. This note gives the reader a heads up in a very gentle way. So right now, content warnings are fairly minimal and they're generally up to the author or a select few publishers if they want to include them. Let's just say we're in the baby stages of adding content warnings into books. So if this is the case, let's grab a few community opinions and see what you guys think of adding content warnings to books at this very early stage. I've been reading your comments, your posts, and your responses to my polls on YouTube, and I've got to say, it's a mixed bag. I've heard from some of you that content warnings are really helpful. You've shared that they give you a heads up about what you're about to dive into, and they can stop you from accidentally encountering content that might upset or unsettle you. On the other hand, some of you have expressed that content warnings aren't really your thing. You've mentioned that a big part of reading for you is the thrill of the unexpected, and that content warnings might give away too much of the story. On the other hand, others have said that if you get a small spoiler, but protect your mental health as a result, it's worth it. And then there's someone from my Discord community who suggests that content warnings should be community-led. They believe that we as readers often have a better understanding of what could be triggering to others in our community. So with all of these opinions, there are a few things that we can explore. Are content warnings necessary? Will content warnings spoil the plot? Who should write content warnings? What should content warnings look like? And are there any alternative solutions? First, are content warnings necessary? Now, this one sparked a lot of discussion, especially here on YouTube. Some of you argued that content warnings could limit our experiences, creating boundaries that we're afraid to cross. Others suggested that we need to build resilience rather than avoid potentially triggering content. But here's the thing, the idea of building resilience is often misunderstood. It's not about exposing ourselves to potentially triggering content without warning or preparation, because that can do more harm than good. As was said in my Discord server, exposure therapy, a technique used in psychology, involves gradual and controlled exposure to anxiety-provoking stimuli. It's not about blindsiding people with triggers when they're vulnerable. Content warnings are about respect and understanding. They're there to give readers the choice to engage with distressing content on their own terms. If we were to vote to get rid or not include content warnings in books, then we're removing the choice from that reader. Next, will content warnings spoil the plot? Getting spoilers was perhaps the next most talked about comment in these responses. Not wanting to get spoilers in books versus protecting your mental health is an interesting topic, so let's explore this by comparing the content warnings in books to the ones you see at the start of a film. Now, do they spoil the film? Maybe not, because they're quite vague. The content warnings in books, particularly the ones we've seen as an example in this video, can be more specific, but not really. So the question you have to ask yourself is, if you don't struggle with trauma or triggering topics, can you skip the content warning? Can you ignore its presence? Because if that's the case, then they're not harming you, they're just helping other people. Personally, I appreciate seeing a content warning. It gives me a sense of trust in the author and the publisher. It tells me that they're considering my well-being when they're crafting these stories and they're not going to blindside me with potentially distressing content when I'm not expecting it. Okay, so let's say we agree that content warnings are a good thing, so who writes them? In the case of A Dowry of Blood and Little Thieves, the authors wrote the content warnings. I was so curious about this idea that I messaged S.C. Gibson to see how this all came about. 
She told me that she chose to provide the content warnings, which she wrote herself, and her publisher was completely on board. In fact, it was an easy process. The content warning she wrote went down so well with readers and her publisher, she's going to include one in her next book too. So this raises another interesting question. Should authors be responsible for the content warnings in their books, or should it be the job of the publisher? On one hand, authors know their story inside out. They're aware of every twist, the character's journey, and every scene that may be a potential trigger. This intimate knowledge could make them a perfect candidate to write accurate content warnings. But authors might just be too close to the subject matter to determine what is triggering and what's not for every single reader out there. So what about publishers? If they were to write content warnings, then they could develop a standardized system, making writing more consistent across different books and genres. But reviewing every book for potential triggers could be resource intensive. This could lead to increased costs and a longer production timeline. Then there's the question of what this content warning should even look like. Right now, it's either a list of topics or a few lines in a paragraph. But should it be a little more organized or standardized than that? One of you suggested the possibility of content warnings they include in movies and shows. A blanket content warning that doesn't give away the specifics. A little like the one we discussed earlier, but more vague. This would make the process a lot smoother and it would avoid spoilers, but is it detailed enough for the potential triggers that somebody could come across? Do we need to be more specific? And if we did, say, use a similar system to films, then it might not be as simple as we think. A rating system for books would require a global or country-specific body to oversee and manage it. The organization would need to read and rate every book, a task that's not only time-consuming, but also resource intensive. And then there's the question of money. Who's gonna foot the bill for this service? Would publishers and indie authors have to cough up a fee to get their books rated? If so, that would make publishing more expensive and guess who might get the cost pushed onto? Yes, us, the readers. Plus there is the risk that this kind of rating system could impede creativity for authors where they might have to tweak their books to fit in with a certain age rating system a tiny bit like they already have to do with YA and adult books. Plus, we come into the same problem as we did before. A system like this would give you an indication of what you should be reading in terms of age, but it might not be that specific. A children's book might deal with topics like loss and grief, and an adult book might too. A film like Rating System based on age might not cover this. So with all this in mind, do we actually have any alternative solutions, especially because content warnings that are printed into books right now aren't all that common? Well, currently there are a couple of places that we can look for these content warnings in the books that we want to read. Take the Storygraph for example. This platform has a unique feature where users can highlight content warnings in their reviews. These warnings are categorized as graphic, moderate, and minor, giving you a clear idea of what to expect. And the best part? If you'd rather not see these warnings, you don't have to look at them. So it's a win-win for everyone. But what if you don't use the story graph? Are there alternative places that you can find these content warnings? Well, some people do include them in their reviews or social media posts. But finding these warnings can take a lot of work. You might have to dig through reviews or scroll through countless social media posts to find the information you need. And let's be honest, who has time for that? So while these alternative solutions exist, they're not perfect and they require either a little bit or a lot of work for the reader. That's why adding content warnings in books is such a simple and straightforward process. It puts the reader first and allows them to just decide if they want to read a book quickly or not. So after all this discussion, where do I stand on the issue? Well, you may have guessed it, but if I come across a content warning in a book, I'm not turned away or annoyed. I am absolutely thrilled. Mostly because I know that the author and the publisher have shown that they have my best interests and the interests of all the readers out there at heart. Regardless of if I personally have any triggering topics or not, that doesn't go to say that I won't have any in the future. And I know that if I have a content warning in front of a book, then I can be protected and choose whether to read that content or not. And here's the thing, you don't have to read the content warning. It's there if you need it or you can skip it if you don't. It's not forced upon you. But if someone actually needs that information to keep them safe, there's no harm in including it. There's only benefits. It's a small gesture that can make a big difference in someone's reading experience. I hope to see more content warnings printed in books in the future, not because they're trendy or because they're controversial, but because they show care and consideration for the reader. But I wanna know from you, what do you think about content warnings being printed into books? 
If you don't like them, what alternative solutions do you think we should have? I want to know all your thoughts, so leave them in the comments. And if you like this video and want another like it, check out the video on screen right now. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.